Hello everybody, welcome to Nintendo Expression Pass here on Boss Rush Network. I'm your host, the Enlightened Excited ADV. Joining me is Bossman himself, Mr. Corey Derrick. Hello, good sir. Hello, we are back with another episode. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> I always get excited seeing you. Why? Because I don't get to see you as often. You know, I, I get to see you on this show and, so, uh, of course, Power Block. <laughs> But I love, like, you know, when we just get together and we see each other, kind of right now through Skype, and just get to hang out and talk. You know, you're my That's best fair. friend, and, and I miss my best friend. I am cool. You're, you're cool. You're old school. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I feel weird because, like, I got a haircut for the first time in, like, th- three months, and I shaved, which is also weird, so everything kind of just, like, feels the same. Uh-huh. on my head and my face and it feels weird and like my hair on my face is getting lighter so it looks like I just I don't know uh, so I, I got out of church and I was coming home and my mom she kind of seen my uh, beard she's just like wait a minute I see silver in your beard <laughs> and it's getting gray hairs I'm like yes mom I'm 42 I'm getting up there in age <laughs> Because uh, the thing about it is, I don't have my gray hairs in my hair mm-hmm. or anywhere else. Uh, it's just this be on my beard, so it's coming in. And uh, Ed's got that yeah. youth, everybody. He's got that youth. I, I, you know what? If I actually shave all of this off, yes, I would have that youth. I probably would be back in. By the my way, thirties. Speaking of youth, I've been, I was, I've been. You know how I've been like re-distributing. Uh, pow block and trying to get the older episodes up on the feed yes i was i've been watching some of the ones from like 2016 and 2017 and it's like a we're both a lot thinner (laughs) yes and b like other than that like we both look exactly the same (laughs) which is yes odd uh but yeah this is just yeah Anyways, that was just something I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, uh, before we actually get into the topic, uh, Corey, we have some shout outs for our Patreon producers. So let's shout uh, them out. We do. Uh, so remember, if you are a patron of the Boss Rush Network, you get this show as well as three other shows early by subscribing to our $1 tier. Uh, but if you subscribe to our $5 tier, uh, you get to be a Patreon producer. What does that mean? It means you get your name shouted out on this here program in this segment. Uh, Patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. Uh, if this is your first time, hi. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, so you can be a Patreon producer. And so our Patreon producers for this episode of Expansion Pass are as follows. If the window will open. Do. Do, 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 do. All right. Quentin Jackson, Rebecca Jewell, Adriel Munger, my wife, Sana Dierig, and Francisco Santillan. Uh, I want to thank all of our Patreon producers. I want to thank all of our patrons, and I want to thank all of our free listeners. Uh, if you are not a patron, if you could go over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave us a five star rating or review, that would be extremely helpful as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Boss Rush Network, and leave a thumbs up on the video. That would also really help. Uh, help It helps with discoverability. It helps people find the show. helps broaden our reach. So, uh, anyways, I, I appreciate appreciate everybody. Remember, all of our content remains free. Uh, we just give some perks to our patrons. Um, so, yeah. Yes. Well, everybody, we're going to be discussing maybe some rumors of games and development for Nintendo Switch, and how did the rest of the year look for Nintendo? Yeah. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, I think we should probably just go over the rest of the year first, um, just because, like, it'll be easier to fill in the gaps with these r- rumored games, because there's, I think there's, like, five rumored games right now. Well, seven, technically, because one's technically a trilogy, but we'll get there. Uh, and I kind of want to see where we're at and then we can kind of talk about the rumor games and see where we sit. Uh, 
So obviously it's July. Uh, it's July 10th as of the time of this recording. So anything that happens after July 10th, uh, any announcements, any reveals, not factored into this episode. Uh, but there, sh- there shouldn't be really. Uh, right now, so July for Switch, we have uh, Klonoa uh, Fantasy Reverie series. We have uh, Live Alive, and we have Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the big title for the year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if we want to go over some of the major third-party games. I think we should go over at least some of them. Uh, but we're definitely going to hit on all the Nintendo published games. Yes. Uh, so right now, I know that Klonoa is out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's having some mixed reviews. And, and a lot of people are really upset. that, uh, Or they're, they're questioning how good it runs on other systems because on a switch the frame rate is choppy there a lot of reports are saying so uh at this point in time even though it's good that for some people who are who may be enjoying it um though bandai neko said that if they want people want more klonoa games they have to go out and support it and it really feels like they could they would support it um, but they need to fix this game on Switch with the frame rate. Yeah, I mean, we're not. I mean, we're not going to deep dive into every game like that. But like, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I feel like a lot of, especially if they're the ports and stuff are being made by, you know, I guess smaller teams or less experienced teams. I don't want to say you know bad teams because I don't mm-hmm. think any team is bad, but. You know, the, the, there are less experienced teams that they kind of shovel these out to to uh, for these teams to keep the lights on and to get experience and stuff. And Klonoa kind of feels like that type of IP. It's not a big IP. It's not a very well known IP. Uh, the fact that it runs worse on Switch than the other consoles is not a surprise uh, to me, at least. I, I think it's a, it's more mostly a surprise because of how smooth it was running and the traders and the direct, and then when the actual product comes out, it doesn't reflect that quality. Yeah, I mean that that the trailer was probably running on a PC build though. To be fair, mm-hmm. I mean a lot of these third party games that are probably running on some sort of pc hardware or like their dev kit or something right they're not they're not running all there it's not like they're like recording a switch through a capture card right i mean this this right. is a, this is something that they curate and send out uh but i don't know i i bet they patch it because klonoa feels like the type of game that feels at home on switch as opposed to the other platforms to be honest i didn't yes. even know it was on the other platforms not that i really pay attention to the other platforms anymore but uh you know, at least like a lot. You know, I mean, I pay attention, but not like we do Nintendo. So, uh, I think it, I think Nintendo just had the trailer reveal exclusive, and then after it, they could say it's coming out for everybody else. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's kind of Klonoa is kind of like a smaller title. Obviously, uh, Live Alive is kind of, uh, a bigger ish title, I would say. Uh, it's mm-hmm. definitely one people have their eye on because it's the HD 2D art style. It f- looks like it is kind of in the vein of Octopath Traveler and Triangle Strategy. So I think a lot of people are kind of ready for it. Um, I don't know, Ed, you're kind of more into these games than I am. Well, you, it's I think you've played the demo, right? So yes, I I, I still got to play more of the demo. There's other stories that I haven't finished yet. It's more I, like I say, it's more about it's a game that it came out for Super Famicom in Japan, and it was localized and everything, but it just never came to America. Right. So people are now finally getting a chance to experience this game that they have been missing for years or decades in in the sense. Um, because I think it was around after Chrono. I think it was around after Chrono Trigger that this game got announced, and it just never showed up here. Right. Oh. Uh, but obviously the big one is is Xenoblade, right? Xenoblade Chronicles Three yes. is the big kind of marquee title for July. Looks awesome. 
I mean, we we did a whole episode. I think it actually came out on free feeds uh, at the time of this recording. You know what? what yes. Today. Uh, yes. Ju- uh, July tenth. So go back and listen to that if you want. Uh, Xenoblade looks great. I <laughs> I'm uh, kind of sad that I haven't finished the other two in time for this, but mm-hmm. I'm still gonna play it. I know. I know Dan wants to talk about like the lore like do like a lore and a story refresher before Xenoblade Chronicles three comes out. So that might be happening for an expansion past episode. Uh, I don't know who's going to do it with him or you and him. Ed. I don't, I don't know what's going on with that yet. So uh, that might be happening sooner than later. Uh, keep an eye out on Twitter, I guess for that, but I'm yes. really into this story. I'm really into the way the world looks. I'm really partially anticipating it because I think it's going to be a, super influential to breath of the wild uh yes and i want to see what kind of world they build and then kind of go into breath of the wild 2 and see what kind of world how the world has evolved uh since Mm -hmm. the first one uh because for those who don't know monolith who makes xenoblade it create is uh they're kind of creating the world that we play in in breath of the wild and breath of the wild 2 and so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Well, what are your thoughts? Yeah, on Xenoblade? I think uh, I think Xenoblade. It, it's weird. Xenoblade Three is because I already got a pre order. I I didn't get get the collection. I'm just like you know what? Let me go to Best Buy. Yeah. Get this already reserved and all of that. I think Xenoblade is kind of like Nintendo's Final Fantasy, where it is numbered, but the stories don't really connect to each other but xenoblade it does have lore because it's kind of in the same world and everything uh-huh. uh but i feel like you could literally jump into any of the gangs if you want to so well, I, think I feel like this... i feel like one two and x you could kind of jump in and play but mm-hmm. three is kind of tying them all together somehow yes and i that's that's kind of like the first time that they've kind of acknowledged this, right? Because the, the, not the DLC, but that epilogue chapter they did for one, the definitive Mm -hmm. edition is kind of like, almost like a prequel to this, where it's kind of bringing everything in together and kind of tying the story up. And also like you can get, you know, they kind of tease that Shulk and Rex were going to become heroes in this game through the DLC, the expansion Uh pass or whatever. So I'm super interested to see how they tie the stories together, even though I don't, I don't really know what's going on in the other games at this point. Yeah, because it's a Xenoblade has supposed to be taking place on the two Titans, right? You know, and it looks like throughout the series that definitely with this third one, it's just like is there another Titan that we don't know about? Or anything like what has evolved because just the way that it looks in the background, it uh, looks like there's like a dragon kind of look, looking up with a sword in it. So I'm kind of because I'm kind of wondering, I'm just like, was there another titan at some point in time that we don't know about? Like, th- there's a lot of questions, and I think Xenoblade 3 will answer them, but I think when we like finally get to play it, jump into the stories, because it really looks like it's a, it's going to be a big cinematic story uh, with surprising parts in the gameplay, in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I know they set the stage with the direct and everything, but I'm just like, there's got to be more that we don't know about. Yeah. So this 50 plus hour RPG um, I'm surprised it's short. I mean, short in quotes, like because like I know that one is like at least eighty. I think if even if you like mainline it with a few side quests, right? Like it, it mm-hmm. and <laughs> the big joke with X is that it doesn't even get good until the hundred hour mark because that's when <laughs> yeah. you get to fight the the sky dragons and stuff. Uh, and then I know two was also pretty long. So the fact that this one's only quote unquote only fifty hours is like nice, I guess. <laughs> I think it's because there's more party members and so the grinding won't take long with that. Cause I think that's the one thing with Xenoblade is the battle systems. Uh where it's it's kind of the fights in itself is that yeah, you're doing these automatic fights, but you really can't, you know, recognize the damage or anything. Mm-hmm. Um because you you kind of, I think you 
when you think of a JRPG and it comes to damage that the stronger you get, you'll be able to do more. So when your overpower a little bit is Xenoblade, you think that you'll get into a fight with an enemy that's way lower than you, and it should take about three hits to kill, but your whole team is still taking about almost 10 minutes or so to battle these monsters, and it shouldn't be that way. Yeah. Well, well yeah. I mean, I, I'm i excited. I think, it's, I think it looks great. I'm always... Uh, it's just like one of those series that is has become kind of a... I feel like it's one of those series that we kind of used to view Zelda as where it's kind of like a premiere series, but it doesn't always get the mm-hmm. love that it deserves. Uh, yes. And I feel like three is kind of going to be its breakout success, you know? So, yeah, uh, yeah we're going to move, we're going to move on to August. Uh, there's not much coming out in August for switch at all. I know that blossom tales two is scheduled for August, which we both really loved the first one. Uh, yes it's kind of a really just like a straight up link to the past (laughs) ripoff almost i would say but uh in a good way yeah like it literally opens up with them listening to their grandfather tell the beginning of a link to the past uh and then you become i forget what her name is you you become the girl and you kind of go out on your own adventure and it's basically a, a link to the past it's really it's really cute it's really awesome and uh funny because i actually just published this story or this uh episode on our feed today where we were talking about how the switch version of blossom tales actually saved the studio yeah for them to be able to do a second one uh so i guess we'll see what it turns out to be but i'm guessing it's going to be another link to the past style game uh you know i'll, I'll probably check it out uh, what yeah about you, I, I, yeah i definitely would check it out i think i'm gonna hurry up and Jump into the first one, finish it, and then pick up two. Yeah, I I already have it on my wish list. So, um, oh nice. And the first one I think was only fifteen dollars to begin with, so this one shouldn't be more than twenty. I bet. Right. Uh, and then the other other quote unquote major game coming out for Switch is the Pac Man World Repack, the remake of <laughs> Pac Man. So World. Do, you know, I will say this: I am going to buy this because I don't remember it on PlayStation One. I don't rem- I remember. I don't remember it either. I thought when they first announced this, I thought this was that weird GameCube game where you needed the yeah. Game Boy Advance, and it's not. It's the platform that came out on PS One. I'm like, when did this happen? Because I have that Pac Man game that came to GameCube. I have like one. I think one. I think there was three of them, or was there two of them? I, I know there was. There had to be two of I them. Think I think there was at least two. But you, it was the weird multiplayer one where you needed the Game Boy Advances to play it. Uh huh. But there there was a 3D Pac-Man game for GameCube also. Yeah, well, there are two for Wii U also, which are actually pretty decent platformers if you're into that. Ah. Highly recommended. They're also really rare and really hard to find, so <laughs> good luck, I guess. But Yeah, this this one I definitely am going to try because it's just, like I said, just didn't know they had one for PlayStation 1. I'm like, when the heck did this come out? Like, it... it I think when it showed it in the direct, didn't know people were just like surprised by it. It's like, oh, PlayStation One. I'm like, shoot, I, do anyone remember this? I I literally don't. Right. I don't, even, I don't even know how the cover looked like on the PlayStation. Yeah, one. I don't remember it either. Uh, also coming out in uh, August is the Splatoon OLED Switch. Uh, which if you want to, if you haven't upgraded to an OLED and you're into Splatoon, this is probably the one to get. So I am, I'm thinking if I can pre-order, I will. If not, I am going to go over to uh, Best Buy Wisconsin. I'm going to buy this for my nephew for his birthday. Yeah. I uh, Also, a case and the Pro Controller are also coming out in August. I think August 26th is the date. So uh, I thought it said the 9th. That, no, the 9th is the game. September 9th is the game, and it's coming out two weeks before the game the game so the 26th oh okay so all the accessories are coming out earlier because i thought it said like the pro controller also is coming out on the knife it's very weird on how they word it yeah maybe i maybe i messed that up in the story for pow block but i'm pretty sure the pro controller is coming out early as well let me check let me check it out uh by the way if you want a breakdown of this uh jack brow wrote a really nice article about it on bossrush.net so you could 
Uh, check that out. I'll link it in the show notes. Uh, the um, well, he um, he just has the the pro or the switch in here. Let me let me look it up. But yeah, yeah. I I really like the look of the switch. By the way, I like the dock. I like the the yes. casing around the switch. Um, if I didn't have one, I would actually consider getting this one. I was uh, I was at Best Buy and I actually uh on Saturday and I actually was um looking through their switch aisle and everything mm-hmm. uh, just to see what they had and I kind of looked around the corner and they had the OLED switch but they had the black ones mm-hmm. so I was just like okay so I'm assuming that uh there's going to be more switches now coming like into stock because i know they said they had all oh, the pro tro- pro controller is coming out on september 9th you're right okay well i was wrong then i gotta fix that story in the google doc anyway continue sorry i just oh no 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 i i just i'm, I'm thinking that uh we'll be probably getting more switches coming to stores um i'm just surprised that the white ones haven't like really shown up yet yeah, it seems like the white ones are pretty scarce. Um, so, yeah. So speaking of uh, September 9th is Splatoon three. Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on Splatoon three? I mean, I think we're all pretty much in the same boat. We're all going to probably get it. Yes, uh, we are. I am definitely going to get it. Uh, I got to see how that night looks because uh, I would love to jump in and play around with the community. Um, and just have a, a fun time. If not, I definitely want to try it online and see how that game is. Yeah. Uh, and finally dig into the uh, single player and see what that's all about. I, and I and I want to try the seven run. I think I'm. I know I need to do seven run apart on uh, Splatoon two, but I kind of I want to do it in three also. Well, uh, to see how it three, is. Three, It's I mean three is different than two because two it only runs at certain times a day which is weird and you can only mm. play with friends. You can't play with like it doesn't match make you. Which is weird. No. So, but I mean and- I I I would definitely play some salmon run cuz horde mode and gears of war is like one of my favorite modes and I never yes. get to play it anymore. So playing a uh, salmon run on Sw- on Splatoon 3 would be awesome. I always feel like I'm underpowered when I do horde mode in Gears of War. Well, it's cuz you're supposed to feel that way. <laughs> so I just I'm like, dang it! I'm like, am I doing something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, you have uh, NBA 2K23, usually a big seller on on all consoles. I I'll, might get it this year. Uh, I'll probably wait till Black Friday for like a twenty dollar sale because that game it comes out and then four weeks later, like even like a month out, is on sale for like forty or do this. Do this. The Switch version digitally has been like fifteen dollars every other week for the last six months. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I I know what you mean, but I I I actually really like sports games, and I like when they're good. Yes. And two uh, K on Switch has been really awesome. I have, I got, let's see, I got eighteen, nineteen. 2021 and i skipped 22 because i didn't play a lot of 21 and i didn't want to waste the money but mm-hmm. uh now that the Cavs are good again <laughs> i might actually pick it up uh, and i think michael jordan is the cover of 23 there's three covers there's the wnba cover there's the normal cover and then there's like the ultimate edition cover which is jordan uh jordan. so yeah. So what what's with the WNBA? Are they in the game uh-huh. now? There's a WNBA like there's like a NBA mode and then there's a WNBA mode. So you could actually play like a franchise mode and a season and like everything you can do in an NB in NBA, you can do mm-hmm. with the WNBA. So it's really cool. Oh, didn't know they added that. Yeah. And then you can actually like do like when you go and and play other people, I think you can actually mm-hmm. I mean, I don't not online or anything, but you can actually mix and match the players. Like you can actually play men and women on the same team. Oh, awesome. In some sort of mode. I I feel like 
I I know for me, I think if I definitely pick this up physically, I I want to get the NWA the WNBA uh, cover. I'm gonna um, buy the cheapest cover, <laughs> whichever <laughs> covers the cheapest, because I don't need any of the 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 two K bucks or whatever they're trying to make you buy. Yeah, cards I don't. With. I don't need mm. any of the extra stuff. I just. I just want to play basketball, man. I just want to, you know. Right. I, I think I just want to show support and show for the WNBA. No, I um, I get it. But I, I'm also, I've got another game to buy that month. So, cheapest one. I was, <laughs> I'm so man, Destiny? No, Splatoon. Oh. Uh, they come out on the same day, by the way. Oh, oh, great! Dang it. <laughs> uh, the, the anyway, Splatoon. I I'm interested in Splatoon three. I think uh, I think Splatoon three looks like it's a lot of fun. I always I like I was talking about on what was it the expansion pass we recorded the other night. I think mm-hmm. Splatoon is one of those games where I always have a lot of fun when I play it. I just always forget it exists with the hun- hundreds of other games I own at this point. <laughs> that it's like, yeah. Oh, man, I I would love to play Splatoon. And what got me like really itching to play it was actually I think I think Grayson was playing it, and he was posting screenshots of like his <laughs> incredibly close matches. And I'm like, man, Splatoon is such a fun game. I want to play it again. I think that's I think that's the one thing with Nintendo is that they do games with colors that pop so mm-hmm. well. And you know, and I think that's why when we was talking about. Uh, Xenoblade 3 um, and uh, Breath of the Wild 2 is because not saying that Breath of the Wild 2 isn't cut for anything but you know it has that style of cell shading you mm-hmm. know and different parts and everything whereas Xenoblade 3 is just like when you look at it the color is so rich in detail and mm-hmm. Nintendo does that so well and when you look at Splatoon 3 it has like that 80's pop uh, punk kind of uh, color, uh, you know, neon kind of mm-hmm. look to it, but it's done so well. It's done in I, a stylish, I, uh, stylish way. Yeah, I think the colors they chose for this version go together so well, and they make the game look way more appealing. Not that like yes, not that like green and pink aren't super appealing, but like I don't know. There's something about the neon yellow and the purplish blue color that just they grab my attention you know that pink contrast it yeah. just works for the series yeah i i just think the colors are getting better every time they make a new version of this game right like the first one was blue mm-hmm. and orange which is like that's fine those colors are pretty boring but you know i mean that it gets your point across right like they're using paint or ink to cover things right pink and green are super flashy right everybody loves a good pink color but, like, I don't know, man. Three, this color scheme is, like, really grabbing my attention. I really want to play because of the I, colors, to be honest. I kind of feel like Nintendo probably has some kind of... Or I don't know if it's a game or they just have a computer that they just mix around different shades of colors and take notes of what matches and stuff and then puts it in Splatoon. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just think it's so much fun and... and... It's just on the, it's just that white background. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, I think what makes it pop too, like, is the console, like the special edition console, like the white uh-huh. dock with the translucent kind of Joy Cons. Like, I don't know. This whole the whole vibe around Splatoon Three is very cool, and I'm excited to see it when it comes out. Yes. Uh, the last kind of major game coming to Switch is uh, the Diofold Chronicle, which is that weird kind of XCOM meets Final Fantasy Tactics game. Uh, kind of, I don't know, every time I s- see the name, I forget what it is, and then I see the trailer, I'm like, oh yeah, it's that game that they announced uh, kind of along after Triangle Strategy came out. Um, it looks fine. I don't know. I, I want more strategy RPGs, but Triangle Strategy just really didn't do it for me. And that's probably on me, but, you know. Uh, anything to say about Dio, Dio Fold Chronicles? Um, I think I'm going to wait for a sale for it. 
Um, not not saying that I'm not going to get it or anything. Um, I just feel I, I don't know. It, it feels just weird for me that they're not really marketing or promoting it. I, and I think I, I feel like I need Square to give me more detail about the game. Like a, a little bit clearer for breakdown, and yeah. and I'm not saying that I'm not gonna get it, um, because I I I feel like I think I probably will end up buying it, but I'm like oh, this is just gonna be a backlog game for me until I'm ready to jump into it mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah, no, I hear you. All right, Ed, October is a huge month for Switch. There's about Goodness, six I... or seven things coming out for Switch in in October. Can I can I say that October versus November is going to be hard? Yeah, especially because Nove- especially with some okay. of these rumored games that we're going to talk about in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um. So October fourth is Overwatch two. It's coming to Switch. It's free to play. Uh, there's a forty dollar uh, package pre order that gives you like in game currency and some skins. Like a it's like a they did this with the first game too, where the first game was forty dollars, but if you paid the sixty dollars, you got the what was it, the legendary kind of origin skins or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're doing the same thing with Overwatch Two. It's it's free to play. You don't have to pay the forty dollars that it shows you in the eShop, but there's no indication that it's free to play yet on the eShop. So just a little fair warning to all you guys out there looking to play Overwatch Two. I'm gonna jump in. I like Overwatch. Uh, Ed, I don't know. I don't know if I know you don't really play Overwatch, but uh, are you gonna check I, it out at least? I think if they do a physical, like sixty dollars physical one, I think I'll get it. They um, are, they are, but the last time they made a physical edition, it was a code in a box. Uh, so buyer beware on physical editions too. Yeah, I think. It, yeah, I think people are just. I'm gonna have to check more of this out. I think I may get it for mm-hmm. Series X instead of Switch, and I think, yeah. on, on, and it's not so much because of the Switch version; it's because I own the first one on Xbox, mm-hmm. and I really haven't started it. And, yeah, you know? well, I, I think the big the big thing with this game though is that it's it's cross play and cross progression, so you could download mm-hmm. it on Switch, play it on the go, and then continue your progress on the Xbox. Right? I mean, that's yeah, that's like the big draw of this version, I think. Uh, they did confirm that they are going to transition people off of Overwatch One and try to transition them into Overwatch Two instead of merging the multiplayer like they were originally yeah. planning. So that's also a heads up for everybody. Overwatch One will probably be ending at some point in the near future, uh, and they're going to push everybody towards Overwatch Two. I think. Yeah. I. I think I'm gonna download the free version for Switch unless the box art look real cool for it, and then I'll get it. But I think I'm probably I gonna be like, I bet it's dark gray, orange and white with tracer on the front because uh, <laughs> that's ex- it's gonna be the opposite of the first game. Of the first game, yeah. I I think it's yeah. I, I'm going to give this one a try. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so am I. I'm I'm kind of I think I'm ready for more Overwatch. Uh so I'm gonna check it out. Near near Automata is coming out October sixth. Uh this is a big one for Switch owners. I know people have been waiting for this. Uh since I think it was there was a there was a thing out there floating around that said this was actually semi announced and leaked in twenty nineteen, which I wish I could find that story, but <laughs> I just, I, I, I'm ex, I'm excited. I will play this on Switch. I think it's gonna be cool. I think it's gonna be a cool experience. I've been waiting for this edition. I think. So it's, I think it's so outfield for me. Of course, I'm buying it or and everything. I think it's because that this game has been on PlayStation Four for a, a long time, mm-hmm. and then to see that it came on Microsoft, I think it got leaked on Microsoft. No, it was on I Game Pass Square. for a year. No, when it when it got announced for Xbox. Oh. Yeah, I think it, it got I, leaked like right before the announcement at E3 that year. Okay, yeah. So seeing this come to Switch, um, I'm surprised that Square and Platinum and uh, Virtual Soul, because they're doing the uh, the um, 
the porting that they would actually bring this bring this to Switch. I know it's a real uh, like a very old game and everything. Uh, I think it just threw me off that they were that they would do something like this because now it's a possibility. While we got the first game, we should be getting the second game. Um, well, this is, this, this is the second game. We don't have the first game. You talking? No, I'm talking about the Near Automata series. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Near is the first it's game. The first Near Automata right. is the second game. Second one. Yeah, but but I'm talking about the follow up to Automata. There is. I think one. I consider that as this. There isn't yeah. one. No, that was a remake of the first one. The re the, the one that just came out like last year. Yeah. Yeah, that was a remake of the first one. That's the first that's game. So weird. Because yeah. the first, I thought the first near the first near looks different. I thought the well, first near looked different. Here, okay. Well, there's a little explanation here. There are two versions of the first near. Okay. Japan yeah. got a version, and Western audiences got a version. One stars the dad, and one stars the brother. The one that just got remade was the Japanese version of the game, which we never got here. But it's still the first uh, game. So it's like a 1A, 1B situation. Uh, Not to okay. be confused with 2B, who's the star of it near on. So I think that was the confusion of it because I because it's mm-hmm. they it's I think it's near automata no, reincarnation. It's just, it's, it's just or... called near version one point two, then there's like twenty numbers after it, but um uh, and then there's a mobile game which is called Near Reincarnated. Oh, I, I might be thinking of that one. Uh, uh, for I thought that was the. F- I don't want to say. F- well, I did say it's follow called. Up. Okay, Stick so on. the the remake of the first one's called Near Replicant. That's it. That's the name. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's. It's not. It's not like this is a simple thing to follow, right? It can't just be Near and then Near Automata, right? It's it's got to be difficult. Anyways, yeah. yeah. Well, I I think that's what probably what I mean that replicate would come to uh-huh. Switch. Yeah, I because... think I think that's a safe bet. I mean, it's a early Xbox 360 PS3 game. I, there's no reason. Although Square didn't put Kingdom Hearts on Switch, so. But they're putting I mean, Crisis replicate Core. Was... <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, is it? It's <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, it's but... literally so weird. I think I think with replicate is because of. Um, Platinum Games doing it, yeah. Um, I think that's why I'm like we'll probably see that follow up or that second game. Um, because I think with with Automata that with the look and style of it, everybody was thinking that was also part of Mm -hmm. like like near Automata replicant or something like that. It it's it's confusing, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but this is Square Enix when they don't make stuff confusing, (laughs) right? Uh, anyways, I'm going to check it out. I think it's going to be great. And, uh, so. we'll see it October 6th, which is my dad's birthday. So, yay. On the 7th, we're getting, uh, Marvel Midnight Suns, which is the Marvel card game. Uh, I, uh, I thought I wanted to be a Marvel XCOM game, which is also very weird, but I, the moment they said that there were cards in this game, I'm out. I'm sorry. I'm out. I haven't seen no gameplay with this, I mean, so it doesn't. They haven't really the, shown any. If you go to their YouTube channel, there is some gameplay there, but they haven't, like during conferences or interviews or anything, they haven't shown gameplay. But there I, is I, gameplay I, of this game out there somewhere. I I just don't trust it. I'm going to pass. Yeah, I'll probably pass too. Even though I, initially I was excited, and then they said cards, and then I was like, no. Also on the seventh, No Man's Sky. Uh, only single player version of No Man's Sky, by the way, for Switch for now. Uh, I will not be getting it. I'm sorry, I don't really care. I I like the studio. I think what they did with this game, how they turned it around, was impressive. But not, yeah, not <laughs> not getting it. Sorry. T- to me, to me personally, I feel like it's just too late. It's impressive. I'm glad that it's coming out, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's too it's too late. Same. All right, Ed. Uh. Well, Plague Tale Requiem's coming cloud version. I'm not counting that. Uh, I think we already discussed that. <laughs> yeah. 
but on the 20th we have mario plus rabbit sparks of hope this is the this is one of the big games of october i'm super excited for yes <laughs> although the next the very next day is another big game i'm very excited for but mario plus rabbit sparks of hope looks great uh it does no yoshi in it this time though they cut oh, yoshi nice. Uh, but they fine. brought in Bowser with a rocket launcher, apparently. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I think this one is going to... I think because the other one felt like it was... It had this kiss appeal, but still catered to adults because mm-hmm. kids really don't know strategy games like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they made this easier for them to get into because with the free woman of running around mm-hmm. and still being able to plan the strategies and stuff, uh-huh. I think kids will now be able to jump more into this into yeah. this game. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how the free roaming works. Uh, I mean, I watched a lot of the gameplay and stuff that they showed off and everything. Mm-hmm. I just, I want to... It's like one of those things where like I'm watching it and I should understand it, but I don't understand it even though I'm watching it. And it's one of those things where I have to actually get my hands on the sticks to see, you know, how how, how, how it feels runs. and plays and whatnot. Yeah. You know, because like the battlefields are still kind of set up like the original battlefields. There's just no grid. And I, it, it's like really throwing me off. Like I don't my brain isn't comprehending what's going on. Yes. But I'm excited, though. I love that first game. I uploaded those episodes today, too. We did two episodes on that game. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. Yeah. Also, by the way, sorry, everybody. If you're getting a bunch of old episodes onto your feed, it's because I'm putting the feed, the episodes that are missing onto <laughs> the podcast feed. Is that the one we also we eat, the E3 that we talked about it? I think we did a break breakdown of the Ubisoft one, and... Of, of the first game, mm-hmm. yeah, we I did think. we did that, but we also did uh, two episodes when the game came out on this. Uh, okay, and then one was like uh, our next prediction was: is the next direct going to show another Ubisoft kind of crossover? <laughs> <laughs> Which the next direct didn't, but the one after that showed the Star Fox one and Starlink, so we were close. Yes. Man, dude, so many good memories from these. We should do an expansion pass just on old episodes <laughs> <laughs> to see how uh, right and wrong we were. Uh, yeah. Oh, we also said, we also had an episode, Will the 3DS Survive 2019? Spoilers, it did not. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, the next game coming out is October 21st, literally the very next day. Persona 5 Royal. This is a game I'm extremely, extremely excited for. Okay, so been holding out for the the Switch version, holding I, I, out. I, By the way, I, remember when you said that this game was not coming to Switch? Remember when you said that? Yes, and and the reason and the reason I I said that is because Persona has been connected to PlayStation exclusively, like for a long time. So when I'm surprised that we got um. Uh, the Persona Five uh, Warriors game mm-hmm. that came to it, but also with PlayStation, but Xbox didn't get it. Mm-hmm. And we know that Shin Megami Tensei has in Atlas Games have been on Nintendo DS on the handheld stuff, so Atlas has been supporting it. So when Joker's reveal happened, everybody believed that Persona Five was happening. I wouldn't... That shocked me at the Game Awards that Nintendo got Joker to be in that game because I'm just like, okay, I know Persona Q is on DS, but this series is connected literally to PlayStation. And I'm thinking Sony had, like, got the exclusive literally from Atlas for this game never to appear on anything. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of games, though, that connected to PlayStation that are in Smash, though, right? I mean, Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear... Yeah. Like, I mean, I know we got Twin Snakes on GameCube and, uh, you know, Final Fantasy VII came later, but, like, those games are not Nintendo games. Exactly. The the loading screen for Final Fantasy VII up until recently said SCEA on it, which is so- Sony Computer Entertainment of America. Okay. Because right. they funded in public, they, like, they literally stole that game from Nintendo, you know, by paying for it. And pretty much, yeah. 
But then it's almost equivalent to the Mega Man games, uh, in a sense. Like, for a really long time, Mega Man was only on Nintendo products. Yeah, we had the Rally Wars, but that was, like, until Capcom actually signed up with Sega for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Other than that, Mega Man stayed on Nintendo stuff for a long time, even Mm -hmm. before it hit PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. Mm -hmm. Like, it was was literally locked on to uh, on it. So that's why when you see, like, the Mega Man Legacy Collection, uh, for the regular games and X, you'd be like, man, this feels weird playing this on a different Dude, system. Cause by, it's on- by the way, do the NES and the SNES controllers work on the Legacy Collections? Do you know? Um, I cannot confirm that. Uh, I would have to buy the games and then I would have to buy the controllers. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I have both, so maybe I'll test it out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I I really felt like Persona. Well, and Royal makes the best decision because that was like the definitive edition mm-hmm. um, um, that came out for PlayStation. Right. So to see that, you know, that it hit Nintendo. Everybody was, was waiting, like I, like I said, for it to hit Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, I know people said I know Phil Spencer came out and introduced just like you guys want the more Japanese and Eastern games on our console, so we went out and we got this. And like we talked earlier, uh, or not earlier, but we talked in a, um, in an episode of Expression uh, Special Pass that Sega and Microsoft has a great relationship, and we mm-hmm. are not knocking it here at Nintendo for Expression Pass over here at Nintendo. We are not knocking it. We I love that. I love it because I'm just like if they're going to if Sega's going to give Microsoft a lot of exposure with Japanese games, do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you they got the one of the biggest niche companies at 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 the time it was niche but now if you got one of the biggest companies it was just atlas that we already we're still shocked about that even happening and so i'm like if they got that if microsoft was working with sega to get play uh get that game on their system and with game pass um it should it should have been like okay it's coming to it's coming to xbox where's the switch version i'm mm-hmm. like you guys know that Game Pass, yes, you'll make that Game Pass money, but you're going to act, you're going to make money, money off of this Nintendo console, right? You know, and I think the struggle with me is just like I don't know if Xbox is getting physical, but everybody is buying. Well, most people it, are, are buying physical for Persona Five Royal for Switch. Yeah, I mean, I think I don't know if it really matters to Xbox if things are coming physically or digitally because I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know that. Xbox players collect physical games the way that uh, PlayStation and Nintendo players do, right? Like, I I just, I feel like they've been pushing digital for so long. They've been pushing digital since the 360, right? And yes, uh, that changed when Xbox One got Game Pass, right? Like, they are just really pushing people to their digital ecosystem. And I just, I just don't, like, I have a few Xbox physical games. Like, I get some when I find a game that I really like, but I don't collect them the way that, you know, I have Nintendo for a long time or have a couple PlayStation first party games, right? Like I just, I just don't, I see Xbox as a, they have a digital only console. One of their consoles is digital only, you know, like I just don't see. And so, so I think the thing is, is that it's important to, for me personally, I think it's important to have it physically on Xbox because when they had that problem where the online thing went down Mm -hmm. and people really couldn't play a lot of the games on there, I'm like, for those who feel like this is their only console and if you can't play anything on it, but you can somehow still play it in a physical sense, that is... I guess that's just like um, more comforting, or just I can't th- think of the word for it. Uh, that's just more, you know, safety, like a safety net for them. Mm-hmm. Like I, I want. I think the green and black will look nice on the green box of or Series X for Xbox. Um, I really don't know. I would have to look at it, but I kind of want it to be like I. To me personally, I feel like the Xbox version is going to be the rarest version out of all three. Yeah, well, you I know, mean, it usually is now third-party games. 
Like it usually is. Like a lot of Xbox games are becoming really hard to find because they don't push the physical games. Yeah. And which is fine, but like it's just, you know, I think a lot of Xbox games are going to be harder and harder to find because like they'll print them at that initial run and then if they don't you know, they're not going to reprint things, so Right, and that's I think that's why I try to jump on the pre-orders for Xbox. If I see it, because I that's, that's what I did for Halo Infinite. I'm like, and, and Forza Five. I'm like, when is the pre-orders up? Because I want to snag this before they stop selling it or it become hard to find. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I for Persona Five definitely for Switch, uh, the Persona Five Royal for Switch. It's definitely a must for me. Like I. Like I have, I feel like this is a game that I need to own on all three platforms. It, that that says a lot, um, but I I think that game is so good. I can't wait for people to experience it. And you know, just having it on Switch, it's just like yeah, I got to get this first one copy before people who before they stop selling it, people start looking for it, and it's two hundred forty plus bucks. <laughs> online right. trying to find it yeah <laughs> where it's 15 dollars for like xbox and stuff. i mean as soon as things get announced i go straight to amazon to see if it's available for pre-order <laughs> and i go right to best buy <laughs> yeah i just uh, there's a i mean the reason why i do amazon is because there's a distribution center right mm. next like literally 10 minutes from my house yeah, and I go to Best Buy because I have a distribution distribution center, and they still send my games late. So, yeah. uh, but Best Buy, I could just listen to drive twenty five minutes up, <laughs> talk to you while I'm on the phone, get into my game, and then it's <laughs> nagging and go out. Persona still not available for Switch on. To oh, pre-order. it's not available on, on on anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I think the pre orders probably won't drop. I'm assuming it's to September. Yeah, maybe. But it's weird because Nier is already up. Yeah. Nier, by the way, 40 bucks. Pretty decent. Uh, So I know I'm pre-ordering that next week. Uh, I haven't pre-ordered it just yet, but I think I'm pre-ordering. Oh, no, did I get it? No, I didn't get it yet. Uh, So I'm pre-ordering it next week. By the way, I just found the perfect series for you. It's the Mega Man Complete cartoon series on DVD for 50 bucks. (laughs) Uh, I do love that cartoon. It was really good. You would. All right. Uh, so we're going to move to November. <laughs> uh, the weird square kind of uh, gardening RPG, Har- Harvestella, Harvestella? Yeah. is coming November 4th. I don't I understand like this it. game whatsoever. So it's a it's a mix of uh, action RPG and farming simulator. So yeah. it's it's another take on Stardew Valley in a sense. But mm-hmm. you're in, uh, you also do some three D fighting uh, action to get like supplies and land and clear dungeons and stuff. Um, I think I I'm going to get it because this is uh, another wacky title from. Uh, square. I, I gotta admit, everybody. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, I was gonna say everybody's saying I'm gonna get it because it matches the font. Have you seen the weird obsession with people over the Square games that have the same font and the same title cards? Like yes, like Octopath, Triangle Strategy, Default Chronicles, Bravely Default, and now this one have the same font and the same kind of title card on the front of the box art. Uh huh. Everybody has like, like I've been seeing like this weird obsession of people just lining the boxes and be like, when your games have the same font and then it's just like those games. It's funny, like I get it, but this is another one of those games that people are going to start adding to that picture. <laughs> so I I kind of want to do an expression pass on this. I I feel like Square Enix has got back to our original place. Uh, or really in a good standing with Nintendo. Um, because I'm like, for all the JRPGs that has dropped on Switch, that's a lot coming from Square. Yeah, well, I mean, we kind of we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, right? Like, mm-hmm. Square's kind of business strategy has been kind of like, they're kind of they've kind of been refocused the last couple of years, and I think the last kind of major thing was selling off the West their Western arm, right? Which was yes, you know, 
a, a steal for an Embracer group, and I'm so excited yeah. for Tomb Raider 4 or whatever they decide to call it. Uh, but, you know, like, they're big... Their big budget, like two hundred million dollar games, are obviously going to be on Sony's platform. Their remakes and remasters and pixel art games are going to be on are going to be focused on Switch, right? And I think that that strategy is really working for them, you know. And then there's yeah. obviously the games that kind of cross over, like Dragon Quest Eleven, Octopath Traveler made its way to Xbox, uh, Trials of Mana obviously made it over to PS4, but like. I think Square is actually in a really good spot right now in terms of their focus. You know, I mean, final, the Final Fantasy VII kind of remake series looks great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Crisis Core is one of those games that's making the kind of double dip thing. Uh, the uh, Forspoken looks really cool. Final Fantasy XVI looks awesome. Dragon Quest XI was great. Like, I think Square is, like, quietly just doing really really well they're almost like sega to ex- an extent i just feel like their yeah. ip are bigger so they're kind of people it's... notice more but i still think like square is quietly doing s- some great things it's their transition about it's their tr- transition a b- uh of them getting back to their easter style games yeah you know they were the they they were the jrpg um company that people just went to you know and now that they expanded out of final fantasy and dragon quest look how many jrpgs has hit nintendo yeah um bravely default um onanaki uh triangle strategy out the path traveler um i mean i am satsuna and uh lost fear yeah. both hit you know, I mean, there's a lot. They have a lot. And, like, I, I imagine those pixel art remasters are coming. I imagine a Final Fantasy thirteen, some sort of collection, is also coming next year. That's what everybody's waiting for. Because I think they're I waiting think, for thirteen to drop. I think thirteen has some sort of anniversary next year. Like, the some, you know, like, 10th or 12th, 5th, 13th mm-hmm. anniversary. I don't know. Something weird is next year for that game. Yeah, everybody's ready for the. They're hoping, so they're hoping for the trilogy to hit Game Pass. It's on Game already Pass. Did. It's, all, it's um, all on Game Pass right now. Oh, with the trilogy, okay. Um, but I think people want that same trilogy to be re released on, uh, on Switch because that's where everybody is waiting to buy that game. Yeah, I mean that's where I'm waiting. Like I bought, I bought the first game digitally like a long time ago. Uh-huh. It just showed up in my Xbox library when they were doing a, a back compat announcement. And I I was like, man, I just, for some reason, these, like, the, every, I don't know, not to get super off topic real quick, not that we are on topic right now, but uh, the older kind of PS2, PS, uh, like the PS2 and PS3 era JRPGs from Square, even PS1, kind of feel at home in a handheld mm-hmm. in a sense like yeah i've just been because like i've been staring at final fantasy 10 for so long debating on whether or not i should start it and i'm like no you have to beat death's door first you have to beat uh fire emblem first uh and then we can go we can move on to other things but uh i just i just want 13 on the switch i think i think that game is extremely underrated i think I really like 13. I know people don't like it, but I really like 13 a lot. Um, and I know 13 two is kind of considered the pinnacle of that trilogy, mm-hmm. which I never played after the first one. I never played any of them. So I, I know for me with final fantasy 13, I know it's very linear. I think I didn't like the two party system um, and not having a way to like really grind to almost halfway through the game um i didn't i didn't like fighting the espers uh to get their power mm-hmm. and stuff because it was it was weird so i would get killed the first time i would fight that esper and then when i replay it i would beat them the second time and it was just like i don't understand why they designed this game to be because it's just like oh we're all meet up okay now we're all separated to go mm-hmm. so uh and of course it was like 
I don't know. It was it, it was a weird design of you get to a point you're at this chapter, then the next chapter is focusing on two other party members. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and just that two party, um, that two party member didn't work well for me. Definitely when you couldn't grind to get stronger. Mm-hmm. You know, it I mean, always felt like. Yeah, it always felt like everything that you was doing was a challenge until you got to the point where it was more open world and you could just grind as for as long as you want to to get your characters up. Because you give you give them this big skill tree, but you can't really do nothing with it because mm-hmm. you don't have no way to grind to open stuff. Yeah, I mean that's fair. I'm not saying the game is perfect by any stretch. I know it has its problems. I just mm-hmm. I just I really liked it and I think the characters are cool. I think I love lightning. Yeah, I mean like lightning's cool. I think Shaz the the character with that has the chocobo in his afro, he's yeah. super cool. <laughs> like S- Snow is kind of uh a good-hearted <laughs> douchebag at the end of the day, I guess. Uh, you know, Fang is super cool. Like, I, I just, I think the characters are cool, and I would just like those games to be available again. Yeah, I think a re-release for that game. I now, bet, I wonder if they'll come out separately at this point because those, I mean, those games are starting to get bigger. You know, I hope they I, don't do the thing that the initial run of Final Fantasy X did, where like they fixed it with with uh releases afterwards but that the first release of that game uh only 10 was on the cartridge and you had to download 10 too oh no but at, like the second run of that game put both games on the cartridge okay which i traded in the uh one and got the other so you know i didn't even know that final fantasy 10 got uh a cartridge for switch um uh, because it was one that i never found the stores yeah i have it it's on my shelf I'll... it's neat shoot i i'm <laughs> look i'm lucky i was able to get final fantasy 12 for switch for cheap because i'm I with the best buy looking for it that mug is sold out i'm like Whoop. i know um all right so yeah i mean harvestella neat whatever uh <laughs> coming back around here uh let's see the the big games obviously for november are the pokemon games right pokemon scarlet and violet yes if these games are what people are saying they are the open world kind of pokemon game we've all been waiting for and that we hoped legends arceus was and was not uh i'm gonna be in i'm gonna be in on this i i am i am i'm gonna be in it's (laughs) I think the game looks beautiful. I think the art style is great. I think the world looks interesting. I love the character designs. Like the, mm. I, I just, I think this game looks really good in a way that I want Pokemon to be good. I th- yeah, I think I'm all in. I know we'll probably get a Pokemon Direct about it probably in October, I, I believe. Um Yeah. Let's see. It comes but, out on the 18th. I bet we get one at the, like the last week of October. I, <sighs> mm. yeah, I think people will be depending. Let's see. So Harvestell is probably going to take a while for people to get through, but they'll probably enjoy it if it's good. Um, I know we got Skull of Bones and God of War in that same month, uh, but I don't think those games are going to take long. Uh, compared to when Pokemon comes out. I mean, I just, I just, I think those games are for different audiences or, yeah, you know, Pokemon will, like, if you buy two games in November, like, God of War will be one and Pokemon will be one, right? Like, that'll be yeah. like a, you know, Skull and th- Bones, by the way, man. <laughs> that, that reveal was rough. That's all I'm going to say. It's, it's an interesting title. And I'm it's like, that. it's like the division, but with pirates. And nothing good about Black Flag, which is what it was intentionally <laughs> supposed to be. Anyways, another topic, yes. another time. Yeah, but I th- I think for no I think November with Pokemon kind of like ending or at this point in time knowing it's the one of the big games for Nintendo itself. Um, you know I I think that because we'll probably see some new Pokemon or, or everything. Uh. I'm excited for the game. I mm-hmm. think I am still. Go- I'm still going to do the double pack because I need to order it before it be it, it be gone. Um, 
because I, I, when I bought, <laughs> so I have bought uh, the last Pokemon game uh, single handedly, like for each game, uh, because they didn't have the double pack at that time. Yeah. And so now that I see it's still available for pre order on Best Buy, I need to, like, let me pre order this double pack. You know, yeah. everything. By the way, do we still think it's needed? A two, like two game, two games are needed. <laughs> I feel like they're just doing it now because a it's tradition and b it prints them money because people will buy two copies of the game. Do you know? You know what? It's to me, it's the equivalent of double dipping on the game of buying something that's still yeah. digital and you buying physical. It's just the equivalent to me for that. I think, yeah, I think it still it, it still is needed. I mean, that's the way that they want to design the game um, and stuff and make it kind of appealing to one person. And and I think it depends on the artwork of that particular Pokemon. Because if you don't care about this other Pokemon and it's not something that you are feeling, but you feel something else, then, you know, hey, I can spend $60 on the version that I like. And yep. then I just need to find someone else who has the other version, and yeah, we could trade and have fun right there. Just a, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think having the, I think for me personally, now that they do like the double pack and stuff, it's just like it's it's a collector's thing to me. Like I, I love having both games because maybe I could switch off and be like, hey, you know what? I'll start the starter uh, in this blue version with my with my particular. Um, you know, green, like my plant base. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Maybe in this yellow, I, I may try fire element. Let's, yeah. let's see how it goes. You know? Yeah. Uh, lastly, in December, we have Dragon Quest Treasures, uh, which looks like whatever. Um, a budget title for me. I'll wait for that yep. to go on sale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to go through a couple games that don't have release dates, but will probably still come out this year at some point. We're not going to try to predict which month they're coming out. We're just going to talk about them. Uh, Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. I know a lot of people within Boss Rush are super excited for that. Yes. Ed, how do you feel about Advanced Wars? I am ready to get this game. Um, I don't care what the ratings are going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, it may not be my game of the year or anything, but I am a big supporter of Way Four. I love them as a company. I love the games that they make, and, and you know some of the, some of them are hit and misses. Uh, but this game looks fun. It looks cartoony, and it looks like it's going to provide me a lot of laughs. And but I like the strategy, uh, you know, the strategy to it. And mm-hmm. I never got to play Advanced Wars uh, back in the day, so I'm excited for this game. Yeah, I think I'm more inclined to play it now than I would have been. Uh, you know, a few years ago, because of my mm-hmm. love for Fire Emblem and knowing that obviously, Advance Wars, even though this is way forward, like these games were originally developed by Intelligent Systems. Yes, and so I think I'm more inclined to play it now. Although I still think I'm going to prefer Fire Emblem at the end of the day, but I'll definitely play some Advance Wars. Yeah. Uh, the Atari f- uh, 50th Anniversary Celebration Collection. Ed, are you going to check this out or no? Uh, No, I did enough Atari back as a kid. <laughs> mm, but there's some Jaguar games on here, Ed. Aren't you excited to play some Jaguar games? Uh, that's probably the only appeal that might make me get it. Some Atari think... Lynx games, Ed. Aren't you excited to see those? Uh, uh, so it, I think it depends on the price point. Uh, <laughs> if the... If, I think the Jaguar games will probably lead me on to it because it's a system that I never got to play. It's, a, it's something that I thought it was a odd system. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm if they got Tempest on it, I'm going to give Tempest a try. Tempest. Uh, uh, Bayonetta 3. I know this is the one that you're looking forward to the most, I think. No more need to be said. <laughs> I'm... I'm excited. I'm a little concerned, but I'm also excited. Uh, Bayonetta 2 is great. Bayonetta 1 is good. This one looks like it's taking a slightly different direction with the monster battles. A little worried about that aspect of it, just because, like, I don't think the game... I, I don't think the scale of 
what they're trying to do with the game does the like especially the environmental art any service like i think it does it a disservice but also the action is always great in bayonetta so it's it's more of the action and the comedic parts like the over the topness like you can yeah. o- you could overlook everything else no, but I, it's just like i know that i just like i don't think the environmental art has been great in bayonetta anyways and like adding scale to that environment is going to be a challenge i think to look at like don't get me wrong i think astral chain by the way that environment looks great i think that game looks great but like yes i just hope bayonetta knows i just hope they know what they're doing with the scale in this game because the monster battles have me a little bit worried i think it's for a lot of people it's about the combat and everything else could fall to the way yeah, i know i i i know i get that trust me wait till you <laughs> wait till you play near automata you'd be like oh goodness <laughs> Um, Crisis Core Final Fantasy 7 Reunion coming to Switch. I'm pretty excited for this. Uh, although I don't know if I'm going to get it right away because I kind of want to play Final Fantasy Remake and Rebirth first because I think this will kind of expand on those stories. So I, I'm definitely going to get this one because uh, I never got to play the original Crisis Core. Uh-huh. Um, I would love for them to actually include that into this game. What? Uh, the original Crisis Core. I mean, th- it, I don't think they're going to. I think this is this is just a retelling of that of Crisis Core. Yeah, I know, but I, I, I just like the original. Well, I, why not throw out the PSP version? I know. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I kind of think that the story of Zack was kind of the most interesting part of what I played on Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> so, and I never played this on my PSP because. I just didn't. No excuse, just didn't. Anyways, Front Mission 1 and 2 remakes are also coming to Switch at some point soon. I think that these games look really cool. I've never played Front Mission before. I'm excited to play a strategy game with No one has. Leon. Leon. LeBron is the only <laughs> one that played, uh, played it because it's, not, once again, another game that we didn't get here in America. Yeah. I think it looks cool. I'm excited to play those for real. Yeah. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy is supposedly coming out sometime for Switch. Okay. So most anticipated <laughs> game of the year, by the way. This it's game. It's such a it's such a debatable thing. And Why? it's just like I don't know because do I get do I for me personally, do I get this game because you're getting it and we could talk about it? Or do oh, I... this game's going to be so bad on Switch, but I'm still getting it there. <laughs> no, no, the the place to play this is going to the place to play this is going to be Xbox and PlayStation. The, the, I I shocked. I I cannot. I don't understand how they're doing this, but I'm going to play the Switch version because we run a Nintendo podcast, and it's the best thing about doing podcasts every week. And I want to make sure. That everybody knows whether they should play it or not. And I'm going to bite the bullet for you. But no, this game is going to be run like crap. <laughs> the, uh, oh, unless Sa- unless Saber Interactive is doing the port, I don't really trust anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But, uh, well, uh, I mean, Panic Button maybe, but I think Panic Button is more of a first person slash action style yeah <laughs> like they're really good at porting and with like i mean obviously they've done all of bethesda's games and they run great exactly but they know they match it but you know you know the type of game panic button can port right and yes i mean Hobbs port wasn't great and panic button did that like it was good it wasn't great it was really choppy but doom and wolfenstein and doom eternal all run incredibly well on switch so because they work because I know that at least we know that they worked with Bethesda, yeah. the, the people who made it, and you know they they worked alongside with mm-hmm. them uh, to yeah. make sure that things were right. So, mm-hmm. and um, Wolfenstein Youngblood on Switch wasn't bad because the port was bad. It was bad because that game is not great. I'm just gonna throw that out there across so. all three platforms. Yeah. I heard, uh, yeah, I heard how bad that thing was. Yeah. I, I was shocked on how bad it was. Yeah. Hogwarts Legacy, though, most anticipated game of the year. 
We'll probably double dip because I know the Switch version is not going to be great. But it's fine. I'm going to do it. See, it just, why do I have a feeling that you're going to be like, eh, get mm-hmm. this game. And I will be at the store getting it. Better. Uh, Little Devil Inside. I know Laron was looking forward to this game. I don't really know what kind of game it is. I just know people are looking forward to it. So. I have to be reminded of what this game was. I don't. I don't remember this game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're gonna move on from that anyway. Uh, Metal Slug Tactics looks really good. Uh, although there's a lot of controversy around that studio right now. <laughs> really? Well, yeah. Well, the. The Saudi Arabian government has purchased the studio. And, uh, and they aren't exactly, uh, you know, they behead people for fun. And by fun, I mean, like, if you are gay, if you are a woman who doesn't wear the correct head dressing, if you are, you know, it's pretty scary over there, according to a lot of things I've heard, so... They don't want to support that. Yeah, people are really kind of shying away from, not to get like super political or anything on the show, because we really try not to do that, but that support is scary. Uh, But it looks cool, though. Like That's the thing, is Metal Slug Tactics looks cool. (laughs) It looks really (laughs) good. (laughs) Yeah. Looks, Looks better than Advance Wars, I might say. Okay. I okay. I had to take a look at Little Devil Inside. I thought this was only on PlayStation. It's coming to Switch. It's PlayStation. Really? It's PlayStation first, I think, but it is coming to Switch. Oh, I, I'm probably gonna double dip there. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can find something else here now. Um, do, 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 singing a song because I need to find something. Stop scrolling, Mr. Mouse. Mr. Muse. Um, where? Hold on. There was something I just missed. Metal Slug. Sorry, everybody. I'm so, doing great. So, question about the Outer World. Outer World 2. Yeah. Is that only staying now on Xbox? Yes, Xbox owns the IP. Yes, I know that. Uh, but they're not going to try to bring the Switch or PlayStation to like complete those games it's just like both sisters are only going to have just those one games yeah it doesn't doesn't look like it um so return to monkey island is coming to switch which was shown off in the last direct uh looks neat Uh, i'm not really into point and click adventure games but that game looks like another one of those and monkey island is usually considered one of the best yeah, um, I don't know if this one. Did they say this one's going to also be point and click? Or I, I don't know. I I didn't look enough to check I, it out. I am going to get it because I do like the look of it, our style, and mm-hmm. I know the first one they said it was also funny and everything. Yeah. So hopefully the writing is like so good. Uh, but yeah, I this is one that I'm going to get. Yeah, River City Girls too. River City yes. Girls 1 is amazing. I didn't play 0. Did you play 0? No, I did not. I was waiting to see if this guy was going to get a physical. Um, but I might just have to end up going ahead and buy the the original one. I mean, go buy it on Switch, like the yeah. eShop. River, um, River City Girls 1 is amazing. That game is dude, awesome. I, I beat that. I, it, Does that have online a- co-op? Do you know? It may have. Because we need, I think we need to do, I think we need to play that on stream at some point. Uh Uh, But yeah, River City Girls 2 is coming to Switch. Looks awesome. Uh, Shovel Knight Dig also coming to Switch, which is kind of like that roguelite kind of Shovel Knight game, which I'm Uh not super into. I wish they would just make Shovel Knight 2. But they're making Mina. so the, I, I'm excited for Yacht Club's next game. Uh, so yeah. Sonic Frontiers is coming. I'm kind of intrigued by Sonic Frontiers. I'm definitely going to buy it. Yeah. I, I'm I up for giving that game a try. Yeah. 
yeah, I think the open world nature of that game looks cool. I think the stuff they showed with that looks like Green Hill Zone looks great. Yes. I really hope they nail a 3D Sonic game because they are not great recently. So I, I just I redownloaded Sonic Generation on my Series X because it's the 360 version. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but that game has like the frame rate boost it has the the uh what do you call it the 4k yeah boost like it looks it looks and runs great that game is that sonic generations man if we could get that on switch i would be like that's what i'm waiting for i would love to have that on it and i know they tried to pass off sonic forces as a sequel to that and it's not it's not i don't want to make my own sonic character i want to play a sonic okay i'm not i get that (laughs) In the grand scheme of Sonic fandom, I'm in the minority that I don't want to be a Sonic <laughs> character, but I, do, I want to play a Sonic, you know? Right. Uh, maybe I should question my fandom now. Uh, the yeah. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, I think, is a both a day one for us. Yeah. Across every single platform that it exists on. We should. I literally think we should dish work one day. Oh, <laughs> it just, it just say, Corey... Hop on Hyperstone Heights. So maybe let's maybe go. I'll maybe I'll work from home that day. <laughs> why they doing? Why they doing a conference? <laughs> you trying to beat the game in under an hour? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we probably could beat it under an hour. I know, dude. You can you can blow through that game in like forty minutes if you're good enough. Yes. Uh, that's really the last kind of major game that I see on here. I mean, there's a couple smaller ones that I know will be a hit like uh that lord of the rings Gollum game is supposedly coming to switch at some point i don't care about lord of the rings i know people are gasping as soon as i say that uh them fighting herds that kind of weird my little pony ripoff fighting game yeah uh uh it looks i mean it looks cute like it looks fun but like i'm not (laughs) you know whatever uh and that's kind of it for Switch right now, Ed. There's a there's a lot still coming within the next year to nine months. Like, I know a lot of these games that don't have dates will probably get pushed in mm-hmm. the next year just because this year is already so busy or they'll either hit that August date or December or something. But this year is full. How many games do you think we just talked about? 30? Probably about 40. Tw- yeah, about, about 20, 25. And like there, I mean, there's just so many games here Dude, that I'm like, we see a stars being pushed to next year. I know, thank God that... that game got pushed. Like, no yeah. offense, I I can't wait for that game to come out. But that man. that would have been just having a discussion on that game. I'm just like, man, that's that is a lot. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that's uh that's 2022 in a nutshell. Plus. Um, I guess I think we'll save the rumored games for the next episode just because we've been going for an hour and a half. Uh, okay. This, this, the rumored discussions requires a bigger discussion, I think. So, uh, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that for the next episode. Uh, or the, it's either the next episode or the episode after. I, I want to see where the Xenoblade kind of uh, lore catch up expansion pass falls into place. Uh, but you know, it, it's either going to be the next episode or the episode after. So it's probably going to be the next episode. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, we already <laughs> we already on the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, with that, everybody, uh, we're gonna uh, stop right there for expression pass. There's ah. there's a lot of games, dude. We haven't even wait to if there is a Nintendo Direct this month of July, and it's like the main 40, uh, 40 minute one. And stuff is gets dated and it's coming out this year. On top of what we just talked about, dude, well, that's going to be close to about thirty to forty some games. And we still, we still haven't even dropped into the indie direct that's still supposed to be coming out. Well, what like, ca- what so games will they even like? You know, I'm not even going to ask because I don't want to get into this. I want to, I want to, <laughs> I don't want another <laughs> hour of discussion. Hey, everybody's still waiting for Tunic to drop on Switch. I know that's another game that I'm supr- I'm shocked to not get announced at the last whatever. Yes. So 
I, I I feel like that's the closing thing for the indie world direct. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. All right, Ed. Let's let's get out of here so we can record another episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Corey, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram. You can find me hosting the Boss Rush podcast as well as Nintendo Power Block and Expansion Pass. Uh, we are working on getting a Death's Door kind of spoiler cast going for spoiler alert, our kind of new spinoff show that we are planning for this. Uh, try to, we'll try to get a, an episode up once a month on a current or cool game. Uh, I don't want to promise a current game because, you know, everybody needs money and time and effort mm-hmm. for these, but we're going to try to do one uh, once a month. So Death's Door is the first one we're planning. And then we'll go from there. But yeah, standard definition also. Yes. You guys can find me on Twitter at that retrico and on Instagram at that retrico. Uh, you can find me on Discord, uh, Nintendo Pop Block on Mondays live, um, and on Wednesdays for the recorded and audio version. And if you guys feel like checking out Optional Opinion, it's on SoundCloud. I know I gotta get back into that upload some new episodes uh and request some new episodes for it uh, so if you guys are into it yeah check it out uh, with that everybody have a great week have a great weekend and we'll see you next time on Nintendo Expansion Pass bye everybody goodbye